We're Embrace the Globe 21. Yes, we are. My name's Spencer. And I'm Daniel. Yes, and we are checking out Geography Now's episode on... Columbia. Oh, yeah, man. What what did you describe right before we came on here? Coffee and emeralds. Oh, my. <laughs> I... Well, fair, but you, you get to say that. You get to say that. You're half Colombian. Yes, I so... am half Colombian. I do have that Colombian flag right there. That is... I am half Colombian on my father's side. And I have been. Go. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my, uh, my stepmother on my dad's side is Colombian. And so are my, my stepbrother and my stepsister. So I I, I, I can't say I can say as, ma- as much, but I do have some reference points. Yeah, yeah. It's Let's do this. There's a lot to cover, and he does it in 12 minutes. Yeah. Let's see what makes the cut, and let's see what doesn't make the cut. Exactly. Three, two, one. Hey guys, say hi to my friend Diego. Hola muchachos. He's a real Colombian. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. You can go now. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. No! <laughs> that's it? That, perfect. That's all I needed. And he's a real Colombian. <laughs> Thank you. Fair enough. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey guys, want to know the best way to anger a Colombian? C O L U. Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> yeah. Dude, sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. So let's dissect the flag. The Colombian flag is pretty simple. It's just three colors yellow, blue, and red. The yellow takes up half of the entire flag, and the blue and red take up a quarter each at the bottom. The yellow stands for the gold found in the country, the blue stands for the shores and the rivers, as well as the sky, and the red stands for. Keep in mind. Uh, I love that. I love that. That's probably the best little edit he's had. That's probably the best. <laughs> I want to get that as like a sound effect. I, I need that. I need to clip this and use it in a lot of my videos because holy crap, that was epic. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God dang it. Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador all kind of have followed the same general color scheme in their flags, and this is partially because they all have a unique relationship that we will discuss later. But first... One thing you have to know about Colombia is that it has always kind of historically dominated the northern regions of South America and has played a huge powerful role on the Latin American stage. Colombia is located on the top of the South American continent, bordered by five other countries, connected to and bisected by Panama in the northwest, making Colombia the only country in South America to have coasts on both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The country has 32 departments and one capital district for the capital city, Bogota. Uh, Diego, did I pronounce that right? Bogota? Bogota. Bogota. Mm -hmm. Bogota. Okay. Bogota. Uh, which is also treated as a department. The weird thing is that the capital, Bogota, is also the capital of the Cundinamarca department, but technically not actually part of it, so the citizens of Bogota can vote for the mayor of the city, but not the governor of Cundinamarca, even though the governor's office is also in Bogota. Oh, Colombia! Okay, so that's kind of the same... (laughs) That's the same as uh, uh, D.C. Um, You could vote for the mayor, uh, but you you can't... You can only vote in federal elections, and you don't have a governor, I guess. Oh, that's but, a, yeah. That's annoying. That's annoying. Yeah, fix that. It's simple. Just mm-hmm. fix it. <laughs> Yeah. Colombia also has a weird administrative subdivision in which four other cities are also kind of considered districts. They are Barranquilla, Cartagena, Santa Marta, and Buenaventura. Okay, Diego, did I pronounce those correctly? Nope. Nope. Whatever, dude. Uh, okay. I mean, oh, yeah. All right. All right. One thing you have to understand is that the vast majority of people in the country live in the upper highlands and coasts of the country. And you thought China was disproportionate. Colombia is pretty intense, too. Only 3% of the population lives in the dense forests of the south and eastern jungles, even though it makes up 54% of the country's landmass. Many areas to this day are inaccessible mm-hmm. and unexplored or simply just kind of closed off to tourists because of the small guerrilla groups that still kind of occupy certain areas. The country spans all the way from... Okay, so... because at, We just checked out the Brazil episode and... That's part of the Amazon rainforest yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Uh, by the way, how did he do on those pronunciations? Terrible. 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 Yeah. Terrible. Just hold a sign that says kidnap me. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, yes. 
That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Oh my goodness. From Point Gaginas from the Caribbean, which is kind of close to the Gulf of Venezuela, and all the way to the south of the town of Leticia in the border of Peru in the Amazonas department, which by the way has this cool looking flag. Now let's go offshore. Altogether, Colombia has over 40 island keys and archipelagos along the Caribbean and Pacific coasts. Some of the most notable ones being the Rosario Archipelago with pristine coral reefs, Gorgona Island that used to be a high security prison. Yeah, a lot of countries put high security prisons on islands. You're gonna kind of start to see a pattern going on. And there's also the San Andres, Providencia, and Catalina Archipelago which is the only place in Colombia where English is the official language. It had something to do with the English Puritans moving there because they thought Massachusetts was too cold and something with the pirates and wars, separatists, yada, 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 now it's a hot tourist spot. Then of course right. you can't forget the San Bernardo Archipelago with Santa Cruz del Islote, regarded as the most densely populated island in the world. Yeah. People literally have to go through each other's living rooms just to get to other places on the island. Now here's wow. the thing, there's a few insane people in this world that actually have the time, energy, and money to go across this thing called the Pan American Highway, in which they attempt to go all the way from Alaska to Argentina or the other way around. Right around the halfway point, you hit the biggest roadblock, the Darien Gap. Right on the border between Colombia and Panama, there's a thick, dense jungle and swampland with virtually no roads connecting the two countries at about 160 kilometers or 100 miles long. This is the missing link in the Pan America Highway, and in order to get to Colombia from Panama, you will pretty much either have to fly or take a ferry. The reason why there's no road is partially to do with the people going, oh no, let's like protect the rainforest and stuff, and like it could really mess up things with drug trafficking, and also there's this tribal people living there. But the biggest reason why is because it pretty much just costs too much okay now let's have some okay yeah i heard about that uh that gap there because i've watched a couple videos of people trying to do the pan american highway and if they go in a car they put their car on a ferry and yeah. go around it that's crazy though that's yeah. crazy yeah how 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 long is that really how long? miles you're driving across the continent yeah. Not across, down the continent. Yeah, or, or up the continent, <laughs> depending. It is a bucket list item for me, by the way. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Oh, dude. Yeah, do the that's, Pan American that's Highway. A, that's a four-month that's a four month journey right there easily yeah 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 uh we we better get uh content uh going here that yep. way i can schedule it out for four months oh my god <laughs> dude yeah i'm crazy i know <laughs> real fun and see what's inside of columbia Okay, right off the bat, Colombia is recognized as a mega diverse country. In terms of biodiversity, it's only second in the world after Brazil, and about 10% of the entire world biodiversity can be found here. The reason why is partially because Colombia, like the Cameroon episode that we studied a few episodes ago, check it out, comprises an array of dramatically contrasting landscapes all over the entire country. Generally speaking, the country is divided into five different eco regions the Caribbean, the Andes, the Pacific, the Orinoco, and the Amazon. The Andes region is home to the highlands that the majority of the population and urban centers can be found in with snow-capped peaks and volcanoes. Remember, this place is kind of still technically in the ring of fire. You can find wow. the tallest palm trees in the world here, as well as the majority of coffee-growing fields, which, by the way, Colombia is the third largest producer of coffee in the world right after Brazil and, surprisingly, Vietnam? Wow, Vietnam, you beat Colombia? Dang. Well, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to go to Finland anyway. This is also the area with the largest mineral and gem mines with over 140 documented sites. Colombia is the world's largest producer of emeralds, providing about 75 to 90 percent of the entire world's market. Market. The Caribbean region acts as kind of like a drainage basin for Colombia's principal river, the Magdalena, that empties into the Caribbean from the Andes at the point of Barranquilla. This low-laying, humid tropic zone with amazing beaches was actually the first place settled by Europeans in Colombia and is known for having one of the only two desert zones in all of Colombia, the Guajira Desert. You can also find the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains, whoo, which has the world's largest coastal mountain and Colombia's highest peak, Mount Cristobal Colon, although Mount Simon Bolivar is almost completely identical in height. The Pacific region is noted for being the rainiest area in all of Colombia with an average of 400 centimeters of precipitation year round. This rain supports many rivers that flow through the country and irrigate the dense jungles that reach the coasts. The Orinoco region, named after the Orinoco River Basin, is kind of like the farm and ranch lands of Colombia. Sparsely populated, this area is on the other side of the Andes and is generally flatter and suitable for crop and livestock production. This area is also rich in oil and home to the famous newly discovered Caño Cristales River, also known as the River of Five Colors, some say seven, wow. or the Liquid Rainbow River, known as the world's most beautiful river wow. thanks to the various rock sediments and plant life that adorn the crystal clear waters that flow through. This place just opens up to the public and it's actually really hard to get here. There's only like one cargo plane that drops you off in the general vicinity and then you have to drive a ways to get there. Challenge accepted! Finally, we reached the Amazon. Yeah, challenge accepted me too. Hey man. Yeah. Hey man, I'm not gonna lie, Colombia is beautiful. 
Yeah, beautiful. it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Um, which uh, which areas have you visited? Uh, Bogota. Bogota? Uh, I've bo- I've visited uh, Medellin, which is Medellin. like the Rio Negro, which is where their international airport is. Okay, um, okay. And I kind of stayed right there. My business there was visiting aunts, uncles, like in and that lived in Bogota, uh, in sorry, Medellin. And then Bogota is just where I visited for a little bit. That's where I got off the plane and just had had some fun in that area. You know, oh, but right. I, I still want to go to to San Andres uh, okay. Island because that's like he said, it's one of the it, it is the tourist attraction there. It is the oh. the the resort life. OK, there. OK. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you uh, said uh, pronounce Medellin. Because the way it's spelled, I totally went out of it. Medellin. <laughs> Medellin? Me- Wait, what is that? Medellin or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But I'm with you. That it's, I it, it piqued my interest as well. So. Oh, yeah. And it's it's pretty interesting, if I can, because this is probably the most I'll talk on a oh. country breakdown. Colombia is very unique because it has so many different climates in it. Because it's yeah. in the Andes. So you can't really get a good feel for the weather because one valley will have rain. The other valley will be sunny because okay. each valley has its own thing going on. Yeah. So you could have a thunderstorm, torrential downpour. You'll go through a tunnel in a mountain, get popped out. And guess what? Sunny, beautiful, no clouds. Mm. So yeah. so take clothing that is okay for yep. multiple types of climates yep. and and cold because you're up there in the mountains you're yeah. up there in the mountains it's it's still it's it's beautiful it's crazy and it's totally worth it all right put it on the list Amazon region. This area is without a doubt the most biologically compact region in all of Colombia and a world apart from the rest of the country. Here lizards are blue, dolphins are pink, and people sometimes keep capybaras as pets. No matter where you are in Colombia, all the people kind of share the same complex history and story. Such we will cover in... Ah, Colombia, the only place where they can tarnish their image with drug cartels yet entice you with Shakira. Mm. By the way, save yourself the trouble and do not bring up the cocaine conversation with Colombians. They've heard it all and they're sick of it. Uh, First off, the country has about 50 million people and is the third most populous country in Latin America after Mexico and Brazil. It is also the third most populous country with Spanish speakers after Mexico and the US. In terms of ethnic makeup, it's really hard to kind of get an exact individual racial percentage because like Brazil, a large portion of Colombia's population has a mixture of European and either Amerindian or African ancestry or both. It varies on region, but generally, mestizos and whites make up about 80% of the population, with the specific white population, mostly descended from Spain, being somewhere around 30%, but the line is a little hazy. Afro-Colombians, including the mixed-race black Colombians like the Raizal and Palaquero, make about 12%. Indigenous tribal peoples make about 4%, and the rest of the population is a mixture of every other people group like Asians, Arabs, and even a surprising community of Romanis. Now here's the thing, Colombians have a strong sense of regionalism. People on the Caribbean coast generally have a more vibrant party type of culture with numerous festivals throughout the entire year. The second largest Carnival festival can be found in Barranquilla. The Pacific coast is where most of the black community can be found, where one quarter of the entire population there has Afro-Colombian roots. The Andes is where all the business and government is processed with the largest cities. Also okay, here you okay. can find the famous Paisa accent that outsiders in the Latin American world typically affiliate Colombia with. Joanna from Flama does a great job explaining this. Colombia has a bunch of different accents, but the most intense one is, ay pues es que yo soy it's as if Sean Connery spoke Spanish and was telling you a very sad story all of the time. Ay, no, pues es que yo, imagínate tú, es que me acabo de ganar la lotería. She's so great. Okay, that that sounds like my stepmother and my stepbrother and stepsister. That's, yep, that's my that's my aunt to the yeah. T. Yeah, and, yeah. And probably my dad. I'm not sure if he's lost that, but definitely my aunts, definitely my 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 uncles. Um but yeah, absolutely crazy. That yeah. dead. She nailed that accent. Yeah, I hear a little bit of that that in your dad too. I hear yep. it's not as strong, but I do hear it. It's it's crazy. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's the accent that I I grew up with right there. Yeah, yeah. So they're in the Andes, both Bogot, Bogota and and Medellin. Me- yep. Medellin. Medellin. Yeah. Yep. yep. Got it. Got it. Hey Diego, come here. 
Can you can you do the Paisa accent? Let me try. Um, does que papa? Yeah, no, no. Do you know que parsi? <laughs> then of course you have the farmers of the Orinoco region and the least populated Amazon region that has the highest concentration of indigenous tribal peoples, most of which speak their own languages, and many of which to this day are still undocumented. Overall, there are all different types of Colombians. You have blonde hair, blue-eyed Colombians, you have black African Colombians, Lebanese Colombians, and everything in between. Now here's where things are gonna get a little messy. If you're gonna understand one thing about Colombia, it's that pretty much everybody in the country is either somehow affiliated with or affected by one of the conflicting political groups that stem back over half a century ago. Even though Colombia is doing exponentially better than what it was decades ago with a booming economy and relative government stability, kind of, everybody knows that yes, Colombia has had some pretty crazy times and things got really messy, especially in the 80s and 90s when the whole country went pretty much through Armageddon. I'm going to try to condense this in the quickest way I possibly can, but essentially, it all started with the liberal and conservative parties fighting against each other until all hell broke loose and then this guy was assassinated in the 40s inciting a 10-year civil war which ended with each side agreeing to give consecutive ruling power between each side alternating each four years. Years, but then the people were like, no, we don't like that. So they created their own left-wing guerrilla warfare groups like FARC, M19, ELN, inspired by Che Guevara and the Marxist ideologies whom fought against the government and a few incidents against themselves sometimes. Whereas parts of the Colombian army broke off and created their own illegal paramilitary groups that fought against both the regular military and the guerrillas. As all this was happening, drug cartels were growing and expanding their billion dollar empires in the 80s and 90s, the largest ones being the Cali cartel led by the Rodriguez Oruela family and the Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar, the richest drug cartel of all time. Side plug, watch the show Narcos. I've heard it's actually surprisingly kind of accurate. The cartels were so powerful they actually kind of technically ruled parts of the country and they fought against each other and the paramilitary and the government and the guerrilla warfare groups and all while this was happening the biggest casualty of the entire conflict was the everyday Colombian citizen that didn't want anything to do with anything. Mm. <gasps> Did I get that right Diego? Muy bien. Muy okay. bien. Yeah. Good job right. man. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So it all didn't... Whoo, that's a lot to digest that's... right there. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of of inter country turmoil yeah. like you have yeah. so many power struggles on so many different levels you know Goodness gracious but like you had you had villages where escobar was like a saint mm -hmm. you know even though he was he did heinous things but right. he helped the community like you know what i mean like he put tons of money into the community Mm -hmm. And so he was, a, you know, he, the community protected him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. The, the different power struggles it, it, it has had in the past. And um, during that, during those times, Venezuela was booming because oh. Colombia was going through hell. Oh, okay. And okay, now okay. as of 2024, that shit's changed. That shit cool. is. Colombia Col is the uh, is the up and up, up and up, and Venezuela, Venezuela is in going the through it. Venezuela yeah. is going through it big time. Ooh. Now, if, if this isn't prodding too much, um, when did your father uh, emigrate from Colombia to America? <sighs> oh, Forty years ago. Forty years ago, so it's twenty twenty four, fourteen, oh four. 94 84 oh, yeah. oh so he's he been be... he's been in the u.s longer than he lived in colombia oh okay 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 is is the turmoil part of the reason he came no, to america or... no just no my my uh my aunt came over here um looking for uh em employment opportunities and she found it and so she got married and she got my dad a visa he came over <sighs> and he started oh. working and that's how in fact, now I would say 98% of my family are here in the yeah. U.S. Okay. They've come from there. I, I have maybe distant cousins okay. that live okay. in Colombia. Got it. So got not it. my yeah. main, all my aunts and uncles are here in got the U.S., got which it. is crazy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that that's really interesting. That I have I hope I didn't add <laughs> no. any... Uh, prodding way you know no no man no yeah. it's it was it's been interesting to see that like you know they might my because my, during my my father's uh like i would say when he was growing up the goal the the goal was to go to venezuela to work oh right because okay, there was okay. no stability in colombia at that time for where he was yeah, so yeah you go like you go to venezuela to get good jobs you yeah, know so he yeah, did that yeah. he went to venezuela for a little bit 
and then he went to the U.S. Got so, it, got it, got it. So, so that was uh, that's because they were talking about this. That's why I asked. Yeah, it's like, yeah. was that an influence of the that decision? At least for oh, yeah. ants, like, yeah, so, probably. You yeah, know, and do. and and at that time, I think for all of the '80s and '90s, Colombia was like the kidnapping capital of the world. Oh, and I think now it's it might be Venezuela. I mm. think so. I think somewhere in those regions. But um, yeah, for the longest time, Colombia was a no go. Just Got don't it. go. Just ever. Mm. You know, they're not a good place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, your aunt came at the right time. Your family came yeah. at the right time when <laughs> immigrating to America was yeah. a good idea. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, twenty twenty four. That's really not a yeah, good idea. Not not a good idea. Just stay yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a whole discussion for another time, but we'll just say the new American dream is to leave. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I'm there with you. Yeah. It didn't really cool down until about the early 2000s after a huge effort from the U.S. that aided the fight against the cartels, which are pretty much all but non-existent today. Peace talks are still underway right now, and the country is seeing the brightest days it's seen in a long time. And of course, you can't feel bright without... Friend zone. Now, Colombians may have had some internal drama, but they've never really been diplomatically isolated. Historically speaking, Colombia has always been quite the extrovert, even in times of full-blown warfare. First of all, one thing you have to understand about Colombia is the Ecove Alliance, a term I literally just made up for this episode, referring to Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. Oh. These three countries, in addition to Panama and bits of Peru and Brazil and Guyana, were all parts of the same country, once called Gran Colombia. Long story short, regions divided, and now you have three siblings, Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. As you can tell, these three countries have similar flags and culture identify with each other closer than any other Latin American country. Ecuador is kind of seen as like the little brother who got a job, stays out of trouble, and manages his business portfolio while sipping on some morocho on his beachfront home. Now, nice. Colombia and Venezuela are kind of like fraternal twins. Colombia is like the stressed out brother who just got back from fighting in a war, and Venezuela is like the edgy yet attractive punk rock sister who doesn't like to be told what to do. Ah. They compete a lot and have minor squabbles here and there. I mean, Venezuela just kind of recently closed off the border. But in the end, they're all still family, even if it is a little dysfunctional. As mentioned before, Chile is a close friend. Colombians love either visiting or moving to Chile, and business has never been better between the two. Panama is kind of seen as like the little sister that sort of had a crush on the U.S. and decided to leave the family for him. But that's okay, because Colombia kind of sees the U.S. as a condonable suitor for her as he helped Colombia fight against the cartels and effectively re-revolutionized the entire economic infrastructure. Nonetheless, Colombia would probably consider Mexico their best friend. Not only are they part of the Pacific Alliance, but they both love to piggyback off of each other's cultures. Mexicans like to take cumbia, and the Colombians like to take rancheras. In conclusion, Colombia is like that really attractive guy who just got out of a tornado and is just starting to wipe off the mud from his face and comb his hair. Resugiré como el ave fénix. Oh, and Steve Harvey, you might want to avoid coming here for the next few forever. Stay tuned. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the whole Steve Harvey thing? What happened? Didn't he read something wrong? Miss America or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss Universe. Miss I Universe. Think it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, where... Uh, I think he, it was supposed to be Miss Philippines that won. The runner up was Miss Colombia. And uh, that was. That, Not good. The memes were amazing of like, you know, <sighs> when, when, uh, when Christmas came around, he even Steve Harvey himself even leaned into it. He's like, on Christmas, he posts on Instagram, Merry Easter, y'all. <laughs> Stupid. No, it's funny, man. No, but um, yeah. Hell yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. It was good. It's hard to dissect a country without getting like he does a really good job staying in one lane because mm -hmm. it's a very thin edge. You can easily go very political. You can just look yeah. and spend a whole college. You can, you can have dedicate a whole major to the political stuff that happened in Colombia. OK, yeah, that so makes sense. That it's, makes sense. It was very complicated. So he did a very good job compacting it very briefly, mm. you know. Yeah. So he he mentioned all three things you uh, talked about: emeralds, coffee, and cocaine. Coca Cola. Coca -Cola. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Coca Cola. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, the so, marching powder. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no sugar. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was. I I guess what what can you add to it? Like, uh, it's me it's, as a single it, white American. What, what would you say? I would say, you know what you have to do? Cultivate a friendship in that country. Okay. And that, I think that goes for everywhere we're going to watch. You got to cultivate a friendship with someone that's there. Because okay. you need someone to kind of give you the ins and outs of what not to do, where not to go. 
uh, a city, city. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. On this planet, big cities are big cities. They, they're the same. There's the same amount of danger. There's the same amount of fun to be had. There's the same amount of money to be spent. It doesn't matter. You know, when you go out into the mountains, the re like the, the vacation region, stick to like the um, resort type places and they'll take care of you because right. no one wants to mess up, let's say, mess up a foreigner. Because that's bad for business. They need more of us going. They need more tourist industry. Right. They need more uh, non-Colombians uh, dropping money. Yes. Yes. Non-Colombians drop lots of money. Yeah. Um, but it, overall, the people are great. It's a family-oriented culture. Family-oriented culture. Very, you know, you have a lot of families where the grandmother still lives with the, the oh, in okay. the same okay. roof. Like, under the same roof. Like, that's that's the family like that's how it is like usually in the inner cities like you'll you have the a family will buy a piece of land and build right and then the kids will build a floor on top of that house and a floor on that house and it goes up it's oh, wow. very unique it's very unique very interesting very i think it's nice wow but, um, i, I would have never guessed that it's crazy it's crazy like yeah. it's very family oriented yeah but you know is, this yeah the cities are the cities man yeah you know family oriented thing i guess that's why it's attractive to the passport bros of the u.s yep. yeah yep. that's another video in itself oh, but yeah, uh you're, you're good man yeah uh, but hey that's great uh everybody watching what uh what uh missed what, yeah, what have they missed, missed? because daniel has not missed any of it he's nope. done, been there done that has the uh t-shirt t-shirt k9 visa filled out and the k9 visa yep that i threw away so oh. i got my t-shirt all right uh, anyway y'all thanks for watching consider subscribing and watching another video wash your hands scrub your toes wipe your butt blow your nose embrace the suck unplug and do something epic guys <laughs> see y'all in the next one later fellas we could be that mistake do this.